All right, so what are you just, what were you doing right now? I'm putting the uh, spent uh, uh, growing medium block in my uh, uh, bubbler. I conditioned my uh, coconut core for bedding for my earthworms by uh, bubbling it in uh, a nice compost tea. This inoculates the uh, bedding with uh, bacteria, so the earthworms really love it and dig into it real quick. You can see all the earthworms, the way they just colonize the bedding. They would not be this active if I did not do this. I mean, look at these guys. They just love this. They go crazy. You, you would not see this activity without it. And uh, I have saw the activity go up, I'm not exaggerating, 10 times by putting in the uh, spent uh, mushroom uh, grow medium in here. Once the bacteria break down the uh, metabolites and the mycelium of the mushrooms, uh, that makes it available for the uh, earthworms to eat. I don't think the earthworms can utilize the uh, mycelium and the uh, mushroom metabolites directly. They need the uh, bacteria to break it down for them. But once that happens, I've never seen activity like this before. I mean, I'll even see it in the uh, bubbler. Uh, I don't have to add any uh, molasses like I usually do. And that's something I need to experiment with. It, this completely has uh, changed everything I do. So, do you think that because the mushrooms are breaking down those those uh, cellulose and lignans into like uh, less complex carbohydrates and sugars, that um, that might those uh, less complex materials might be what's what's stimulating the growth, like a, almost like a fermentation or something? Uh. Easily, that would be the uh, best uh, assumption I can make, I think. But that and also uh, uh, maybe amino acids and proteins and whatnot for the uh, uh, mycelium and mushroom tissues. But uh, if I'll come back here in two or three days and uh, you see the way it's bubbling right now, it's not really a stable foam. It breaks up rather easily. Mm -hmm. Within two or three days, it'll be a uh, foam that uh, will stay for about four or five seconds before it breaks down. Nice. And uh, I really have to learn how to do this all over again now because of this, because I used to just have the uh, coconut core. Mm -hmm. And they love this stuff. It's a, it's a readily available carbohydrate for them. But uh, the mushroom block, putting that in here, has really changed the whole ball game. It's really up the... Uh, oh. uh, activity levels to something I've never seen before. I think it's really interesting because um, I'm actually growing mushrooms on coco coir too because uh, um, I ran out of sawdust for a period of time right before we picked up more. And um, the mushrooms break it down just like they would break down sawdust and they produce almost a similar, uh, almost exactly identical biological efficiency. Hmm. Yeah. So in my coconut core, I put in the amino acids. Uh, the recyclers, no label on this, but that's a... Uh, Bacterial inoculant. I'll go double label rate with the uh, CalMag and a uh, teaspoon per gallon each of the uh, BioRoot and Roots Organics. And uh, like I said, I use a lot of molasses. <laughs> I'll use the same rate, te teaspoon per uh, per gallon. And you're producing some coir like nobody's ever seen. <laughs> I'd like to think so. I've never seen any coir like it. In the lays, you can see this. I try and keep an active earthworm uh, population going in my uh, harvested earthworm cast, but you can see uh, there still is identifiable material from the coconut core in there. But uh, this is some beautiful stuff. I'd love to see the vegetables this grows this, this season. Yeah. Um, um. <clears throat> oh, here we go. I haven't seen this before. Didn't, didn't you throw some of your, your castings down outside on the grass? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, seeded out some uh, tall fescue at the uh, top of the property here on top of the hill. <coughs> I chose that because it's a, a dry spot and it's putting a lot of sun. Tall fescue very well adapted to that. And uh, if we're nighttime, we can go up there right now and you can, it'll be obvious even at the end of February here where the uh, uh, castings went. 
Well, we'll definitely get some videos uh, while we're doing garden work and stuff like that this year. Um, this is uh, for, <laughs> we kind of just like jumped into this, but for those that, for those of you that don't know, this is uh, my friend Kurt. Uh, this is the uh, gentleman that owns the property where I grow my mushrooms and uh, part of the garden web that we're going to be doing. Um, so we're going to be growing lots of food here, um, lots of uh, organic crops and mushrooms. Um, and Kurt is going to be expanding um, his worm colonies to handling the massive amount of uh, mushroom spawn that we're going to be producing up in the uh, the mushroom growing facility on on his property here. Um, so it's really cool that we're doing this experiments uh, both for uh, our mutual benefit and uh, what I like to call and what uh, other people are calling uh, business guild. Um, so our businesses are mutually beneficial to each other, um, and it's really awesome that he's a uh, learning all of these things about how we can uh, better process our mushroom materials and create uh, complex living soils. Um, so is there, any, is there anything else you wanted to say? <laughs> right on. Awesome stuff. Yeah.